Hey everybody, Sunny here. Before we get to the show, I just want to remind you all where you can listen to my podcast, Cast Aloud Chats. I'm on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more streaming platforms. I'm even on YouTube. With YouTube, you just search for Cast Aloud Chats, and every episode of my show is up there on YouTube. And now, on with the show. And welcome to Casa Loud Chats, a podcast dedicated to Nickelodeon's The Casa Grandes and the Loud House Universe. And I'm your host, Sunny. And welcome to episode 27 of Casa Loud Chats. And yeah, it's been a while since I've done the podcast, so welcome back to Casa Loud Chats. And today is going to be another Casa mini so because for this episode, we're just going to dive into a little bit about the last episodes of season four of The Loud House. But I'm not alone today in today's episode. I have a very special guest with me today today. This person is one of my very close friends in the fandom. It is Wee Villain. Welcome to the show, Weave. Well, thank you for having me here, Sonny. Uh, yeah, I heard you mention that today's going to be a mini episode. You're trying to introduce people back. Inviting me may not be for the best as far as bringing all the viewers back in, but I'll try to do my best to be an awesome guest. So as you heard from Sonny, my name is Wee Villain. I also uh, go by Weave. Um, I used to go by BH Winecraft back in the day. For those of you who know me back in oh, the 2016 uh, Dark Ages, you know, way back when. Um, so you will frequently see me trying and failing to produce quality uh, fan art, fan fiction, fan this, fan that, whatever. You know. I'm trying. The point is, is that I'm trying. So uh, <laughs> please bear with me. And I am trying to make a quality podcast here. So we have something in common. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go, there you go. <laughs> but having you on is what's going to make it even better, you know? I'm so glad to have you on, Weave. Thank you so much for doing this, because today, of course, we're doing a preview for the last four episodes of Season 4, and then the next episode I'm going to have, I'm going to have another guest on to talk about the full episodes. But for today, we're not going to go into news, I'm going to leave that for the next episode. But we're going to talk about the last four episodes premiering this week, which are How Double Dare You, Snoop's On, Friends of Dry Places, and Coop dreams so let's talk about the first episode which is how double dare you and the description here talking about this episode is the loud siblings rely to lisa's genius to help them land a spot on double dare but schemes soon lead to the sibling rivalry putting ditzy older sister lenny and lincoln against lisa and her dare bot which was actually an official description for this episode that was released on animation magazine so weave what are your thoughts on this episode how double dare you well, uh, first of all, let me just give a little background as to um, me and this episode, because as you said, it talks about um, uh, what, was, what was the uh, live show that this is based off that Nickelodeon did back in the day? What was it? It's again? Double, uh, Dare. Double Dare. Double Dare, right, yes. Double Dare. Yeah, so Double Dare, stuff like that, you know. Um, I was never really into that growing up with Nickelodeon, so I really don't know what to expect as far as like all the challenges and quests and whatever that we're going to have for the episode so it's going to be quite a surprise for me in that regard so i can't wait to see that but um going into the mean potatoes of it considering the characters of lenny Lincoln, and lisa um i really think that this is a pretty refreshing um take on this idea because we've seen this before you know we have the you know the underdogs and lincoln and, and, and lenny in this case uh trying to prove a point against somebody who doesn't have a lot of faith in their abilities and even demeans them with Lisa and uh, a creation of her own design. It makes perfect sense for uh, her character to do so. But what I like about this, what the hook to me is, has to do with Lincoln and Lenny. Because quite frankly, this is not a pairing that I see a lot of um, with the Loud House. It's been a while since I've seen these together um, teaming up and when you consider that Lincoln's teammate here is uh, Lenny well this could lead to possibly speculating and thinking that of course you know Lenny being Lenny is going to serve as a source of potential downfall but I think that's a good move because um, one of the charms to Lenny is that she's full of surprises you know like she said before she's not just full of press, she's not full of hot air you can pull out something, you know, every now and then and really surprise you. So I could very well see a 
of course, uh, Lenny and Lincoln coming out ahead with Lenny being the one who um, not leads the charge, per se. That's more Lincoln's apartment, but the one who has the key to win the day all in all in the end. Or heck, maybe nobody wins because I saw the preview. Yeah. Which, um, is that OK if I go into the preview? No, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw a little bit of the preview and. Not to say that, you know, Lenny and Lincoln were jerks or anything, but I, I saw a little bit of, um you know, competitive uh, uh, brashness on both sides. So perhaps all sides here need to be taken to task, learn a little bit of a lesson, and maybe nobody wins. Or maybe it's a uh, Pyrrhic victory, so to speak, which is where you win, but based more on off a of technicality because of a major loss that you um in the long run as well. So I don't know how that's going to go, but really, when I look at all four of these episodes, um, this was the one I probably had the least expectation for, but after I saw the preview and I took a, a more in-depth look at the updated description, I figured that this is not going to be an episode that I can predict um, as well as I've been able to do with other episodes of The Loud House. Yeah, I agree, because going into my background with Double Dare... Like, with the Legends episodes, we already had an episode with a game show with Nickelodeon, and we had Legends back in 2017. And that show I had a more a bigger connection to, because Legends of the Hidden Temple was my favorite game show growing up. I watched that religiously. But Double Dare, I have a bit, like, a, another background with, because when I was younger, I actually, we went to Universal Studios, and my sister actually got to be on Double Dare, like, as a volunteer, so that kind of is reflected in my life and I actually watched the show growing up as well. But with this episode and that preview that they posted on Instagram, you see that Lenny has a competitive side to her, which I don't really think we've ever seen before in the show, or if we have, I can't really recall that. Because with Lenny, I never thought she would be very competitive. It seems like her and Lincoln are out to get Lisa, and we don't know why. Like, why are they so against her? Why are they like, oh, we're going to beat you. We're out here to, to, stop, to stop you from winning. Like, what is the reason why they're competing against each other? Why does Lisa have this dare bot? Why, why is all this happening? It's such an interesting thing. And again, the Lenny and Lincoln pairing. What was the reason behind this? Why did Lenny decide to compete with Lincoln? Like, I feel like Lincoln was the one that wanted to go on the show, like, with Legends. He wanted to go on with his dad because they bonded over that. So maybe Lenny likes Double Dare, and maybe her and Lincoln bond over that. Because I thought maybe you would think Lori, like, the oldest sibling, would compete in this game. Or Lynn, for that matter. Why wouldn't Lynn compete? She's competitive. Why wouldn't she compete? So it's weird how, like... And also, we also have the episode uh, Scoop Song, which we'll talk about later. Lincoln and Lenny are paired up in that episode, too. And it's like season four had these double pairings with Lincoln. We had two episodes of Law and Lincoln, and now we have two episodes of Lenny and Lincoln. So that makes me very intrigued, because, like, I never thought that Lenny and Lincoln would be paired up in an episode like this, or even two episodes, for that matter, this season. So this, this episode, with this whole idea of them competing against Lisa... Is so fascinating to me because, like, they convinced Lisa to let them get on the show, but they're competing against her. So, I don't know how, again, like you said, I don't know how this episode is going to go or how I can predict it, but it's just going to be such a quite, such a, like, a quite, quite an interesting episode, to say the least. Oh, absolutely, definitely. And, um, well, go back to what you said about, um, why isn't Lynn competing? Why isn't Laura competing? Well, it could just be that, you know, maybe Lynn isn't type of uh you know game shows whatever that really don't push your body to the limit because you know what i mean i haven't seen double dare but i haven't seen the episode at all my entire life but i presume it's going to be like you know a bunch of like horses and puzzles whatever but you know it's not going to be like as exuberant and bracing or whatever as something like uh football or anything like that uh but whatever the reason may be i just like that we're trying to um we're giving Lincoln more pairings with sisters that we don't exactly see much of or aren't really explored with because we've seen Lori and Lincoln explore death, uh, Lincoln and Lynn to a certain extent. Well, I think we've got covered a lot of ground. The fans have really taken off with that pairing yeah. in more ways than one. <laughs> but um, with Lenny and Lincoln, um, I, I'm, I'm not going to say who said it so that no one, you know, goes after him or whatever. I remember a while ago, a friend of mine, uh, was talking about Lincoln and the sisters. And he said that out of all the relationships 
at Lincoln's How with the Sisters, and this was back in like season two, I believe, when he said this. He said that the one with Lincoln and Lenny was by far the least interesting and the most underdeveloped because they just don't seem to have anything in common. But even um, going as far as that, um, I can somewhat see where he was coming from. And I hope that with this episode, we get to see Lenny and Lincoln kind of bonding on similar ground that goes even beyond just trying to be Lisa. Maybe, like you said, they both love, you know, they both love the show and they don't like the fact that, you know, maybe Lisa's providing antagonism to them by saying, oh, you'll never be good enough or whatever, whatever the case may be. I just hope that this speaks a lot more volumes to Lincoln and Lenny can be together as brother and sister as you know coming together and trying to um you know have a similar goal and you're just trying to achieve now, i hope it does more than that but even if it doesn't there's still a lot more ground uh there's still a lot of uh intrigue and a little bit of mystery to me that i don't exactly have um down to it i'm still going to have a lot to take into the pre yeah, like, there's going to be a lot for this episode, especially with the Lincoln and Lenny pairing. Because, again, like, I had said this to a friend before, talking about the episode, because one, one of our good friends is a huge Lenny fan. And I said to them, you know, I think maybe this could be, and I'm not positive on it, it could be just a prediction, this could be hinting at the future of Season 5. You know, because Lori, once she goes off to college... Lenny's going to take over and be like the older sibling. So maybe this is like predicting the future where Lenny's starting to bond with her other siblings once Lori goes off to college. But that's just more of a speculation than a prediction. I don't really know if that's true. But with her being with Lincoln in two episodes this this uh, week, it seems like it could be a possibility, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. That, that is a possibility. A very um, interesting avenue to go toward. Definitely. So yeah, any other final thoughts on how Double Dare you? Um, well, I have one similar sentiment that I'm going to express now just for the sake of brevity and just get out the way already. Uh, for the remaining of the last uh, four episodes of season four, I'm just going to knock on wood here. Please, no flip at all, please. <laughs> Get him out of here. I never want to see him ever again. You, you saw that season four, pro, uh, p uh, the, uh, the season four poster, like that picture with all the characters, right? Flips in it. So I think he's oh, going to be God. in one of these episodes. Uh, okay, fine, fine. Just no dialogue. No extended. <laughs> we I, are... just, I just hate how this has all come full circle. It's just, it's just karma. You can tell him about all of that. He's going to get his own spinoff eventually. We all know it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's like, we all used to make fun of Flip. It's like, oh, yeah, he's there, but it's not like he's, like, the important character. Now he shows up so much, we're just tired of it, Glad House crew. It's like, we get it. You like him. He, you put him in every single episode. It's not new anymore. He was in every single podcast episode. We get it. We don't need him anymore. Stop you overusing him. We get it, you know? But that's not, hap that's not the case. They want to put Flip in, like, every single episode. So... I, I think he's going to be in one of these episodes, probably the Friends of Dry Places episode, because that's just going to make me even more angry, because I'm more excited for that one. <laughs> so, oh, you know. yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why not, why not? Yeah, have Flip there, you know, trying to sell, I don't know, like, it's going to be like, uh, what, the beach, something like that? Have him yeah. try to sell snow cones. He's like, going to be like, at the Double Dare. He's going to be in Double Dare, like, selling hot dogs to the crowd, like, Hey, get your flippies and your hot hey, dogs! get your hot dogs here, yeah! <laughs> That's going to be a buck fifty. Oh my gosh, Flip is here in the studio! <laughs> Hello, Flip! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were friends with Flip! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 okay, so here's the deal, guys. So um, I introduced myself from the beginning, but what you didn't know about me probably is that I live in an apartment and Flip's helping me out, you know, with the uh, with the rent. So he comes in every now and then. He pays half of it. He, I have to cover all the utilities myself, you know, with the lights, the water, everything else. But as far as rent goes, Flip has that covered, you know, with at least half of it. You're living off of his hot dogs and flippies, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. See, the thing is, is that you heard him say that he's selling hot dogs for like fifty. I convinced him to go that low uh, because originally it was going to be eleven fifty. So yeah, Flip, not cool, not cool. Uh... Yeah, you don't tell me how to handle my business. I'm a successful businessman. I, I know what I'm doing. 
Oh, flip. Never change, man. Never change. <laughs> never change. Never change. Oh, all right. Here's a here's a bad transition, but let's go on to the next episode, <laughs> which is Scoops On, which is also a very interesting episode, to say the least. So, um, after secretly reading Luna's diary, Lenny and Lincoln become worried about the expos of their sis- that their sister writes about. So, Weave, what do you think about this episode, Scoops On? Or Snoops On? Oh, Why wow. do you say Scoops yeah, yeah, On? Sno- Snoops On. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Snoops On with special guest star uh, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Hopefully, um, but but here's the thing. Uh, Snoop's on um, what that to me by far is the most interesting plot that I personally have between all four of them. Because, I mean, the thing about this episode is that um, you know once again we have uh, Lincoln and Lenny uh, kind of teaming up, and also we can't forget about Luann because yes. she appears in the title card. Oh. So, um, as well, which I, I didn't see. Me I neither. It's going to be about uh, Lenny and Lincoln, but you know, hey, I don't mind an extra player in there, especially if it means that we're going to finally see Luna and Luann being on amicable terms with each other for a change instead of always at each other's throats all the time. Um, but anyways, so Snoop's on. Um, this is an episode that um, get with like the Loud House. You know, they don't really do a lot of things that are new or fresh spins on old ideas really i'm just more intrigued to see what luna has into that has lenny and lincoln being concerned because i'm kind of i'm trying to read the room here preview and all the promos it looks like um it's not just a matter of oh we have all this embarrassing stuff about luna that we're just going to read into and we try not to for too poorly or whatever i mean i don't know about that it looks to me more like they think that luna's gonna get herself into this danger some trouble or wrong they're trying to um or just 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 get on that and try to stop it or whatever the case may be that's what it looks more like to me than any else um but the thing so with that in mind it kind of looks like it's a play on um Theater by the dozen where everyone misinterprets the yeah. action from afar and they think, oh no, something's about to go down. We need to try to stop it. That's when, you know, they try to stop it and if out, there's really nothing to be worried about. And then Luna's like, hey, dudes, what, what are you doing? Looking at, you know, how, how'd you know I was here or whatever? And then, and then they, you know, that this and whatever. And they read the diary. And I mean, I'm just, me, the most interesting element of this episode potentially exactly we Luna. Beyond just the main conflict of the episode, I want to see a little tidbits about Luna and, and what she does in her personal life. Ever maybe she brushes the left side of her teeth or right side? I don't know. Maybe um, jaywalks. No one's looking. I don't know. Anything to spice up Luna? Not to say that she's a bad character. She's most certainly not. But it, I just what I love about the Loud House is that you take these little quirks and these little interest that you don't normally see or wouldn't really expect to see in characters and add them on to them and makes them more fleshed out. So that is a great moment for character building for Luna. I think has the most uh, potential as part of the episode. Even beyond the Lenny and Lincoln pairing. What are your thoughts about it? So I when this episode was first announced I got so worried about it and I still am because again this episode is with Lenny, but also with my favorite character, Lincoln. And the fact that, the, that they're secretly reading Luna's diary without her permission, it's her, it's her privacy, is something that I'm not, that's rubbing me the wrong way. I mean, I'm sure there could be a reason why they're reading her diary, and maybe they find out she's doing something bad in the beginning, and then we'll find out it's in her diary or something, but still, the fact that they're reading her diary really concerned me. Why would they do that? I don't know. Why are they do that? I have no idea. I talked about it on another episode of my show where I compared it to the episode of Spongebob called Little Spongebook, where Squidward reads Spongebob's diary. And of course, that episode did not go well, and then that was really, you know, mean-spirited episode, of course. I'm sure the Loud House won't be that way. But the fact, again, it's just them reading her diary with no explanation whatsoever is really concerning. 
But after seeing that promo, it's like, well, maybe she is doing some bad things, you know? What I could guess from is that she's sneaking out at night to go to concerts and stuff, but we've already seen her do that before in the show. Like, in season one, they mentioned, like, she went out, like, she went out by herself, and then, like, she cut the power off from, like, you know, doing concerts and stuff. So, like, it's not really a big surprise she does that, but, like, but like you said, it's basically Cheater by the Dozen, where they think that she's doing something... Like, that's really bad, or you know, they think she's, like, do I don't know what she could be doing. Like, I can't really say what she could be doing on the on here, but, like, they think she's going somewhere and doing bad things, but, of course, in the end, she's just going to a rock concert. It was like, hey, dudes, I'm just rocking out my friends. Like, why did you think I was doing this? And then they find out, then she finds out they were, re they were reading her diary, and obviously she will get very upset. That's the one thing I'm still concerned about is what Luna's reaction will be to them read her diary, how mad she'll get. Because I think Le Le Lenny and Lincoln, and even Luann, will have to get some consequences from reading her diary. Because that's, that's not a cool thing to do, man. And even so, like, um, just seeing Luann in the title card, it's such a role reverse. Because, like, seeing the shadow of Luna, like, lurking above them in that evil grin, while, like, Lincoln, Lenny, and Luann, of all characters, is terrified of her really concerns me. I mean, those title cards don't usually match what most much of the episodes most of the time, but, like, seeing that really concerns me. And with Luann being it, you know, maybe Luann might actually defend her roommate and be like, you know, Luna's not doing what you think she's doing, and I can prove it because I'm her roommate and stuff, but maybe once she does read her diary, which, you know, Luna's probably never let Luann look at, maybe that's when Luann is kind of like, oh, no, we have to stop her from doing this. So it's more just like, what is going to happen this episode? It's more concerning, but I really hope it ends up being a great episode in the end because just the overall plot of it really concerns me, you know? I, I, I can understand, uh, you know, people will be, of course, reaching people's uh, privacy is not cool. I mean, unless you're anonymous, then you can put it however you want, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop them. But, you know, the thing is, is that... um. Like you said, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Luann is the one who's, you know, cowering and, and fear whatever. And I think that really just adds a lot of, you know, strong elements of speculation. And, or I should say confirmation. I did that they're looking at Luna in a very ominous light that this diary is giving them. So it's more like they think something's happening. That's not really happening. They're trying to stop it and they're trying to resolve it. The funny thing to me is that you know, again, this kind of goes back to what I said about Luann and Luna kind of being at each other's throats. If Luann is in this position, that means that she's just as much in the dark as Lenny and Lincoln are, which is, you know, I'm not going to say is, you know, out of character or doesn't make any sense. I kind of think it kind of goes to show that Luann may not necessarily know as much about Luna as you would think roommates who are sisters who've been living together all this time would do. Yeah. Of course, this, you know, this is in Luna's diary, so Luann's going to know every intricate detail. You would think that, you know, let's say maybe Anne is at a night, whatever she's doing, and she would be the one who's like, eh, whatever. She comes back home. She's, I'm not going to worry about her. You guys are bringing over nothing. Put the diary back and stop snooping. And I would think that Luann would be the voice of reason. She'd be kind of, you know, charming. All that good stuff, all that jazz. Um, but it looks like no, she's out of the loop too. So it was only prepared for Lenny and Lincoln to play a big role as Luna in this episode. I wonder what Luann's gonna uh, do if she's initially be like, ah, everything's fine, whatever you guys, and be concerned, or she's gonna be concerned from the from the jump. Know about that, I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, because like. We've seen hints of Wynn and Luna's relationship, and it's all over the place, you know? Like, those two are just the war- like, they're just the definition of roommates, you know? Like, really bad roommates who just don't get along, they argue, they don't like each other. I mean, there's hints of them, like, getting along sometimes, but, like, even in recent season four episodes, like, in the puppet 
short like they were fighting in like see the four episodes they were just arguing in the way and cooking episode luna's like oh i'm so glad mr coconuts is around like they hate each other for some apparent reason and we don't know why and i still kind of wish we would get an actual episode about these two but if this episode actually dives into luan's perspective on luna as a roommate that'll be very interesting to know like how she feels about her and maybe tries to defend her but in the end, doesn't really know her sister as well as she thinks she does, despite being a roommate. That's very interesting, to say the least, because you would think, like, before and Lenny, they know each other really well, or, Lo or Lo and, and Lana know each other well as roommates, or, or Lynn and Lucy. But maybe in the end, just because you're roommates doesn't mean you know a lot about each other. That's why Luna's writing down all this stuff in this diary and keeping it a secret, and Wynn's probably never read it, or, ne uh, or Luna's never told her about it, and it's like, she wants to keep it to herself. So that's what I'm most interested about, is what Wynn's perspective is on this whole situation. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty... And um, just one other last thing to say. Um, we both kind of think that this might have to do with the concert, consider or whatever. I will be disappointed that that's all it's going to be. You know, I, you know, here's the thing. I never owned a diary. You know, I'm not... I was never into that as a kid. I would think that for someone like Luna, going to a concert is like second nature to her. The night to go to a concert, second all that stuff. Will she really need to write it down in a diary? Oh, I'm going to go to something later, dude. Cool, whatever. Wicked, bro, or whatever. I, I don't think she would need to have a diary, something like that. I don't know. Just seems like it's a... If, if that's all it's for, I'm going to be kind of disappointed. Oh, it's just... that would be something just out... Just something completely out there. Something that would make sense for Luna to keep Luna is not a reserved character in the slightest, especially about her passion. So keeping it under lock and key for something as mundane would be counter. Eh, I don't know, just kind of lame. Yeah, but it's a it's a rock concert at night. So it's at like night. Ooh, yeah, okay. at twelve a.m. past her bedtime. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, past your bedtime. Wasn't that an? It's like guys, I was just going to uh. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait, what's that? Oh my gosh, in season three, she, that's not even good polka. What if she's going to a polka concert instead of a rock oh, concert? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. But Luna, I thought you didn't like polka. I like good polka. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I solved the problem, buddy. If that happens, everybody owes me twenty bucks. <laughs> uh, oh, Flip's not gonna fork it over. Hey, it's Flip, where's my it. twenty bucks, Flip? <laughs> he's, he's just—he's pretending not to hear you right now. <laughs> I know he always ignores me every time I try to talk to him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So, any other final thoughts on Snoop's on? Uh, let's see. Um, well, actually, not really. I've kind of covered everything I've, I think I've needed to cover. I mean, I just, just hope that there's more to it than a concert. And I'm intrigued to see Lance's perspective on this, even though Lenny and, and are, are, of course, a part of this story, too. Yeah, I agree. And now let's go on to another episode, which I think you might be more interested in because of certain characters in this episode that you like, which is Friends in Dry Places. While on the field trip, Lincoln worries that his friend group is splintering. So, Weave, I know you are a fellow Stellakin shipper, so I assume there's probably going to be some Stellakin this episode. But besides that... Mmm, mm, I wonder! <laughs> 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 I love you some Stellakin, man, so we get some of that's good. But, uh, you know, with that, uh, what do you think about this episode? Um, well, the thing about this episode, Friends in Dry Places, is that, um, at, um, How Double Dare You is the episode I have the least amount of, um, speculation or as far as any sort of, uh, uh, thorough, clear direction of where it's going to go. I take that back. I actually think it's going to be this episode because, I mean, the, the, the episode seems pretty straightforward the thing about it is that the description of it is very relatable and it can yeah. really resonate in a lot of different directions as far as the characters go I mean, 
Rusty wants to go and do something else or Jack wants to, I don't know, act stuff. I, I just have no idea what this separation or this fear could come from uh, as far as Lincoln goes, because obviously this is going to come from Lincoln's perspective. Yeah. Which is always interesting. Yeah, I know, you know, being the you know big time Lincoln fan as anyone should be. Um, yeah, I, I just, I have no idea what is going to happen. Even with the preview in mind, it just seemed like it was like, oh, you know, Lincoln is out here, you know, with his friends in like one shot, another shot, he's licking jam or something like that. I don't Off know. Off of Clyde's that. feet. <laughs> oh, God. Just, Why? I have no idea. Lincoln. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> there's, there's just so many different, like, elements and s little snippets that I can't sew together a somewhat coherent story thread. I, I can't do it for this. What's Stella going to do? What's Lincoln going to do with his friend going that way or his, her friend going that way? And this and that is just, I just don't have any idea. But if I had to make one solid guess, one solid guess. It's that maybe Lincoln and his friends, you know, we see him kind of at this beach, whatever, and you know, Lincoln seeming to have a good time, right? Lincoln, uh, maybe his friends didn't want to go, and, you know, they just went along with him just because, Ooh. you know, they wanted to make Lincoln happy. And, you know, their friend, you know, Lincoln's friends, of course, being as bored as they are, they want to go do their own separate things to try to at least, you know, have some fun and their idea of fun isn't going to be the same thing as the other friends a type of fun maybe stella wants to collect uh seashells by the seashore and sell them i don't know whatever and you know again zach wants to go hunt for you know uh frogs or alien frogs or frog alien, whatever the case may be i don't know he's a big time amphibia fan he wants to find the land of amphibia i don't know but um <laughs> You know, Rusty could be doing his own thing, trying to hit on the ladies, I mean, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Yeah. I just have no idea what is going to happen with this episode. No clue at all. Beyond the fact that Lincoln is going to lick someone's foot with jam in it, at least put some bread, you know, on top of the foot, put some peanut butter there too, you know, make yourself a foot sandwich. I don't know. Just, <laughs> I, I don't know what to make of that scene myself. And I'm just yeah. going to just, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, that whole, that scene, when I saw that, that was a big yikes, dog. It's just like, <laughs> why are you licking toe jam off a of client's feet, and why do you like it? Oh my god, ugh. Man, like, I was, when I first heard this episode, when it was first announced, I was so excited for it, because I'm a Lincoln fan, and I was so happy that Lincoln was finally getting a focus episode after the last, after season four ends, of course, he's getting, like, a whole bunch of focus in these episodes, so, no complaints there, but, like, an actual focus episode, yes, but then seeing that, I was like, you really had to ruin my enjoyment of this episode, you really had to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just why, but, um, what you talked about there, I have to put that into... What, what the perspective of this episode is, Lincoln feeling left out and feeling like his friends are, you know, his friend group is splintering because they all want to do their own thing. Um, you know, I have a lot of headcans when it comes to Lincoln's character, and a lot of that has been, you know, shown in episodes like Predictability and Antiqued Off, where in Predictability, Lincoln was like, oh, I'm so boring, and I need to change my ways, because if I don't, my friends won't hang out with me, or think I'm boring. Then in Antiqued Off, his friends were just, like, pretending to like his magic just to make him happy. And I really didn't like that, because, like, he... You know, he was jealous of, of Clyde hanging out with Zack and felt left out and, because he didn't have anything in common with them. But then when his friends were like, oh, like, I think Madge is kind of boring. Clyde only went with you because to make you happy, which wasn't really the best thing to do as a friend. Like, just be a good friend. But I worry that if his friends just do that and are like, oh, hey, like, yeah, we'll totally go to the beach with you, Lincoln. We're only going to make him happy. No, that's not really being a good friend, you know? I mean, I understand. I understand that. You know, it's a realistic thing where you really don't want to tell your friend that you're not interested in the things that they like and you want to just go along with it to make them happy. But I've come, you know, I've been in that situation before and it's like, if you're, if you're, if you're my friend and it's like, okay, 
you know, if I talk about The Simpsons and my friends don't like The Simpsons, just tell me you don't like The Simpsons, you know? I get it. You want to make me happy by listening, but if you don't like it, that's all right. Just tell me. I don't need to, you know... I don't need to, I don't want you just to, you know, just to like it just because I do, you know, that's a, that's a very realistic thing. So with this, it's like, maybe Lincoln sees that his friends want to go do their own thing, and he's being a good friend by saying, hey, you know, why don't you guys go do your own thing? You know, Stella, go collect those seashells, because Rusty, go hang out with those girls, you know? Like, he be, he's being a good friend, but then he feels left out and is like, wait, where'd everybody go? And they're going to do their own thing. And he's trying to do his own thing and he feels left out and he misses his friends. I feel I feel like it's going to be a very predictable episode, honestly, with just in the end, they're all going to be like, we're not going to split up, you know, we're not going to break up, you know, we're just, we're just going to, we just want to do our own thing, but we're always going to be friends, you know, I, I really like that. But I really like that they've continued to give Lincoln these insecurities about his losing his friends because I had the same headcan with Roddy Ann and that's more... With the Casagrandes, that's more evident to her fears of losing friends like the city suckers. But Lincoln has that same fear in a different perspective because he has these group of friends, and even and it's just like a very different situation with a realistic view of uh, him feeling like his friend group is going to break up just because they want to go do other stuff. So I don't know what he's going to do with this. Whether he's going to try to like distract them, like maybe he goes up to Stella and tries to help her, like find seashells but maybe he just isn't interested or maybe he just gets hurt like a crab kind of like you know grabs his hand and he gets hurt or something or maybe Rusty's trying to flirt with girls and Lincoln just can't flirt with girls because he's not interested you know like I don't or maybe like wait wait Wait, what? What's that? Lincoln not being able to talk to girls? That's <laughs> something I haven't seen in this cinema in a long time. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm going. With, I'm going with Cannon. Okay, fandom Lincoln <laughs> can get thrown in the trash. Okay, I stick with Cannon Lincoln. He's awkward at AF. You know, like, but whatever, whatever perspective, whatever you know, version of Lincoln you want, that's okay. But for me, Cannon Lincoln is where it's at. So he's awkward around girls, and then like I don't know, maybe he doesn't like. Uh, that wouldn't be really, that'd be very sad if he said he doesn't like frogs. But, like, he's trying to do these things with his friends, but they just want to do their own things. Or maybe they're going to hang out with other people during this field trip. It's like, it's a field trip of all things. It's like, it's just a field trip, Lincoln. You know, you'll be back in school and you'll all be hanging out in school. What's the problem here? But it is a very realistic fear of, like, seeing that your friends are, you know, getting into other stuff or hanging out with other friends or being interested in other stuff that you're just not interested in. And, again, I feel like it's kind of, you know, a combination of predictability and anti doff where in anti doff he was jealous of Clyde hanging out with Zach. And then Clyde didn't like magic, but he was just going along with it because Lincoln's his friend, and the friends were doing that too. So here it's probably be the same thing where Lincoln is going along with, like, his other friend's interests, but he's just not as interested in it, in it as they are. So they do the same thing with him. So I'm just, I have a lot of thoughts about this episode. It's, it's going to be like, it's going to fuel a lot of my headcans for sure. But it's more the case of I don't really have any, like, true ide- ideas of what's going to happen. It's more just like, like, it feels insecure for 11 minutes and I'm going to enjoy it as much as possible. <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's the that's the one thing I'm just most excited for. It's just a Lincoln focused episode, you know. And to add on to your head cannon, I mean, you, it's um, you look at stuff like predictability and antique doff to show that you know, and about Ronnie Ann, you know, she moved away when they were you know really bonding. Of course, yeah, Lee can still. Get her. It's not the same as just you know being able to walk up to her house for five minutes and say, "Oh, hey, Ronnie Ann, want to go hang out and play arcade and you know, Sunny Eclipse, the happiest girl on earth." You know, <laughs> it's not the same thing as that. So, I mean. On the show, going all the way back to when Ronnie M moved away, you know, Lincoln, you know, losing a friend, I think it has a lot more ground to cover with, you know, the rest of them. They're not moving in. They do something like this. Man, I would love it's that. It's not going to happen with them, but it, yeah. it, just gives, it just gives the fan fiction writers and, and all the fan artists out there like me to think about and make cont- uh, content. You know, wink, wink, make potential. Uh, Ronnie can win November-ish, you know, <laughs> and it could happen. No. 
hey man, I mean, I if I was a writer on the show, that's that would be the case. I would connect with Ronnie and but sadly, I'm not a writer on the show, and they don't ever connect his relationship to Ronnie and to his friend's relationship. So that will probably not be the case, you know. But I wish, I wish that were to happen. But you know, that's uh, I've had that I've had that head cannon for years. You know, I I figure his losing of his friends was connected to Ronnie and too, but. You know, the show never wants to give that to me. They just want to let me drown in my tears, you know, until Roddy and Ashley makes another cameo in the show. But, you know, but, I mean, come on. This episode's going to have Stella in it, and I know there's a potential Stella King week coming up. Wink, wink. I don't know who's oh, running oh. it, but I know it's coming yeah. up. <laughs> uh, well, whoever is running this Stella King week sounds like a very charismatic, very capable, very ashingly handsome rogue who deserves all the support in the world. So... If you just so happen to come across this uh, potential Stellican week that's not totally not happening in the first week of August from the 2nd, 6th, um, and you should totally go ahead and uh, take a look at those prompts um, and, and, and see for yourself that this totally not happening Stellican week tales and, and, and what it's going to have for the first uh, part of August. Yeah, you should totally not participate in this totally happening Stella Kid Week with lots of fan art, lots of fan fiction, lots of content for the Stella Kid Week because clearly this person does not want any Stella Kid to happen. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, it's one of the greatest ships on the show, you know, besides a certain ship, but I would say Stella Kid is absolutely a number two Lincoln ship for me, so go contribute to Stella Kid Week. That's my plug. <laughs> Okay, there you go. All right. So, you know, see, this is the kind of plug I like to hear about on podcasts, not, oh, this podcast was brought to you by Crest Toothpaste. <laughs> Brace the day with an award-winning smile that'll totally beat Lola loud in all those pageants that she keeps getting first place in. Crest Toothpaste. You know? Smiles for days. If uh -oh. I actually had a paid sponsorship, I would love to have Flip, like, read that sponsorship. Like, hey, oh, <laughs> it's Flip's for, and this is the sponsor. Uh, sp today's show is sponsored by Flip's Flippies. All the hot dogs now are half price off. Flip's Flippies, where Flippies taste like dirt. <laughs> oh, Dad, if you want to buy hot dogs, only going to cost half the cost of a heart surgery. <laughs> That's your new deal. Now, with new heart surgery deal, buy one Flippy, get two for free once you get your heart surgery. Yeah, by my cousin. <laughs> yeah. Your cousin all... Another cousin. That's right. His cousin could also be a, be a sponsor, too. <laughs> uh, what was it? It's, it's like Flip. The other one does, like, tickets, and the other one... like He has so many different cousins, man. You know... You know what? I, as much as I did like Relative Chaos, we should have got Relative Chaos with Flip and his family of like. Oh my God! And, and if we <laughs> don't get like a season five episode, just uh, exploring Flip's family, I don't know what the what could happen in season five. I feel like we're gonna get like a whole backstory about Flip. What is his life like? You know, we need to learn more about Flip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, any other final thoughts on Friends in Dry Places? Um, friends in dry places. Um, let's see. Oh, if it's true that this episode is going to center around uh, Lincoln's friends doing what they want to do, I am both somewhat intrigued, I hate to admit it, and, uh, and of course, you know, kind of just kicked out by the fact that Clyde wants to, to, to lather his feet in belly with his friend Lickett. I don't know where that's coming from. Frankly, half of me doesn't want to know. Yeah, I'm. I don't know what kind of thing Clyde is into, and I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and the last final, and the final episode we're going to talk about today, which is actually an episode with another character you like, is Coop Dreams. In order to buy her dream car, Lori becomes a local rideshare driver. So I know you are a a a. Uh, a fellow Lori fan as well. So I, I, I wonder if you have any thoughts on this episode. And of course, it is the final episode of season four. So what are your thoughts on this episode and it being the season finale of season four? I mean, you know, I like Lori, but I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm more of a Beatrix fan more than Lori, so I'm, Lori's fine. <laughs> but for real, um, oh, this episode, um, her trying to get her dream car, I mean thing about Lori episodes is that I believe they are very straight 
card. There is not a lot of surprises you can get out of them. Well, this one is going to be, I expect, so to be just Lori trying to get all these different events, whatever, you know, in her car, hijing, a little bit, you know, a little bit of fallback, and uh, I can't do this. God help me, that sort of thing. And Lori being horrible and funny as she is, just trying to get through her day without wearing her hair out, which we've seen a lot of. Just Lori losing her hair. I mean, just getting cut off, getting shaved off, having it ripped out, cut. You know, all this stuff. Oh, I could see that happening in this episode at some point. Maybe I don't know. But anyway, anyway. Back to this episode with um, Lori trying to get her dream car. Um, what I like about this episode is that, okay, perhaps there may be a little bit of a callback, at least a little bit of a more progression towards her going to college, going to Fairway, but it doesn't look like this episode is going to provide too much of that. It's not going to be about Lori the... Um, graduating uh, high school or going into college is going to be about Lori, someone who just wants to achieve a pretty, I guess, typical teenage girl type of dream, your dream car, let her hair, you know, flow in the wind and all that good stuff. I'd, I'd really love it if the dream car were to be, were to be similar to the one that um, this great, wonderful fan artist named uh, Assess Numeral, you can follow him on Twitter, it's a lot of great fan art, especially if you're a Lisa Lori fan. I hope it's the dream car that um, I hope it's a car that um he drew for uh, um Kalori Week for the final day where Carol and Lori are just driving together. That'd be a pretty nice car. I would think so. At least. Um, but other than all of that, I do like how we have Lenny this episode too. I I believe she's in this episode, if that promo is anything to go yeah. off of. Um, yeah, totally. She's in this episode. So I see, um, you know, Lori and Lenny being excited. And I mean, it just to talk about Lori and Lenny for a second. I really like her in this season in particular, because even with episodes that aren't exactly about one or the other, they still find ways to have Lori and Lenny all be, you know, attached to the hip, relate to each other in ways that, you know, girls their age do and all that stuff, you know, like you, you back as far as um said episode uh where lenny becomes funager kind of think of it, a leader of the rat yes you see Lori giving lenny advice um sort of thing of course with um a don't you forget about me you know lenny of course plays a big role in that that's about how that was about lenny is, uh, lenny how much Lori means to her and stuff you know and, and don't and don't forget about me don't you forget about me um oh so seeing these two always seemingly with each other even with episodes that aren't really about you know again one or the other mm -hmm. um it really establishes just how close they are as uh sisters and i expect to see lenny uh play a big role in this episode as well and i would be a little disappointed if she didn't play a big role in the episode Yeah, I agree. Like, with this episode, of course, it is the season finale of season four, and I feel like it's a better fit for season finale, where Lori is getting her car for college, which I believe is what's going to happen in the episode. And yeah, Lenny's definitely going to play a part in this. Maybe she's trying to, like, you know, watch Lori get this car, and maybe it influences Lenny to, you know, take on what will be her leader role once Lori leaves for college. Because, yeah, I love the relationship between Lori and Lenny. They've really built it up this season, like, with Don't You Forget About Me, which I was like, well, yeah, right, that episode was about Lenny and not about the Roddy Kim moments. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, all right, oh, yeah, that was a, there was a Lenny episode, not not totally the Roddy Kim episode where she made her cameo. Anyway, fine. Uh, and then, and then uh, Leo of the Rock, of course. But, like, seeing that where they were paired up together a lot this season, it's like, it's going to be very sad once Lori does go off to college and Lenny doesn't really have her best friend anymore as much as she would like her to be around. Like, don't forget, you forget about me. She was like, we'll video chat and talk and make phone calls every night, but she won't physically be there for Lenny. So Lenny will have to try to do stuff on her own 
in that case, once you leave. So I feel like Lenny will make a presence in this episode. But, you know, uh, with Lori being a, a cat, like kind of a rideshare driver, like an Uber driver, you know she's going to take Flip for a ride. You know he's going to be in this episode, <laughs> for sure. Taking, taking Flip around, taking a bunch of random people around for a drive. I feel like that's what's going to happen. It's just she's raising the money to get a car. She, once she fails at first, she cries. But then it's like everybody feels bad for her. They help her out. They give her the money. She gets the car. And whatever car it will be, whether it be the one in that beautiful fan art that that, that person drew. Or it kind of looks like Vanzilla. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the car will look like. But whatever it is, I hope that Lori achieves her goals to get this car so she can be able to drive off to college in season five, you know. Of course, because, you know, as we know, Lori should get everything. It's just Deborah, that's... that's I agree, I hope she gets her car. Yep. <laughs> All right, so any other final thoughts on Coop Dreams? Oh, um, like, I don't... Maybe you mentioned this before, and I my mind just blanked out for whatever reason. But to go back to uh, Lori and Lenny, and of course, um, relating that she... ...being... Sister, so to off the college. I think Lori getting her own car, Lenny inheriting Van Villa would be a pretty big way to do that. So Lori gets her own sentence with car. Meanwhile, you know, and Zilla, not, not, not necessarily for herself, but at least you know, inherit that, so to speak. Have that be part of her new identity on his life. Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. It also would be like a development from Driving Miss Hazy, where Lenny was going to learn to drive, but she did in the course because Lori sabotaged her in the end. But with this, you know, Lenny could finally get Vanzilla and Lauren to drive. That way she will be the next person in the family to be able to drive. Because, like, Lori's picked her up from work in episode, so Lenny obviously doesn't know how to drive yet. So once Lori does get her new car, I think it'll be time for Lenny to step up and finally learn how to drive. Maybe she already knows how to drive because I I, I, I I always am kind of back and forth about this. Does Lenny know how to drive or not? Because you see, like you said, I always picked her up from work before. But then you see Lana's podcast and it's like, I think she easily mentions that Lenny has been Vanzilla before. Like, how to drive or not? I, I don't know. I I'm say this in the, in the best stuff. way possible, my friend. Continuity, what's that? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Continuity, what's that? Whatever, whatever is the best outcome for this episode, if it relates to getting her own car and Lenny, you know, inheriting Van Zyl, she knows how to drive or not, what is the best outcome with, with that and bring on it in. It's my hope. But, yeah, me too. So that's all the episodes that are coming out next week for the last episodes of Season 4. So now we're going to go into a little discussion about Season 5. So uh, I want to ask you this, Weave, because you're my guest on the show. What has been your overall thoughts about Season 4 as a whole? How how did you feel about this season? First of all, folks, thanks for staying with me this whole time. <laughs> but, um, my thoughts about Season 4 as a whole... You know, um, this is going to probably be a little bit negative for me, not to say that the, the season itself has been bad, but out of any time I've been a Loud House fan, um, this has probably been, been least invested I've been in the show. Not to say that it's bad, but, you know, of course, life moves on. Again, uh, I'll try to look at it as, quote unquote, objectively as I possibly can. I think overall, if these last four episodes do not in any way, shape or form approach ruthless people's <laughs> horrible quality for the love of god please don't do this to me please <laughs> if you don't go that far down i think this could be top to bottom as far as quality goes the best season had a lot of bad episodes and um you know i mean there have been some bad episodes of the season of course you know like uh i wasn't a fan of kings is the con yeah i, I got a lot of uh funny points for that um, I wasn't a big fan of um, um, what's it called? Room for improvement <laughs> at all. Didn't. Um, but still, so regardless, um, there were a lot of great episodes of the of, the, of this season. Um, not too many boring or you know kind of meandering ones. Only a few, even though they didn't really hit 
as emotionally for me as previous seasons have, even though are technically worse. I think as far as episode quality goes, season four is the best one. I really hope that they long note, especially considering that we be capping things off and off in the season. Yeah, I agree. Like, season four, to me, is the best season. Not just because of quality of episodes, because we haven't had a bad episode this season at all. I mean, I hope what these last four episodes don't, you know, achieve that goal. We don't want a bad episode, Lattice Group, we don't. Kings of the Card, I mean, it's it's bad, but it's not, like, it's not so bad that everybody agrees it's bad. You know, it's, it's just mediocre. And the Cascarati arc, of course, the highlight of my year last year, like, that was... That whole arc was so wonderful to me, except for Pranks for Memories, but I don't need to go to a rant from that. But still, I think <laughs> season four overall was such a solid season. It had such great episodes for every character in the family and side characters and such wonderful stories. I think the season really was very solid. And, I, and with hearing these last four episodes, they all sound super solid and... I just agree that season four has been wonderful. And again, like you said, you know, I've been kind of falling out of TLH because season four is ending soon. So it's like time for me to go into some other stuff before I get back in the loud house and I'm refreshed and ready to go for season five. But with season four ending, it's just crazy how it's ending this week. I feel like season four was just here like last year. But, you know, I feel like this season's really been such a solid season. I mean, my one complaint was Lincoln didn't have a lot of episodes this season as a focus but and there was a few like they started out slow with the click of the cloud episodes which i agree were too much too many but then they started picking up the pace and not having a lot of click episodes and focus on the friends the friend group and then like more about the sisters and the relationships and i feel like season four really just is just has been just hitting the mark with episodes and just haven't hasn't had any bad ones like some some mediocre ones I can say I agree on, but generally I think the season has been really solid. Well, absolutely. And like you said, um, that's a really strong point to make is that um, pretty much all of the Loud family, do mean all the Loud family had very strong showings this season, E.B. Lily. Yeah. I see um, that episode again, um, Any Given Sunday, right? Yes. Any Given Sunday is regarded as one of the best episodes Possibly 10, top five. Very solid showing. Lots of great quality gags and animation and storytelling that we haven't really seen before. It was a very ambitious take on what the Loud House usually does, and they did it in a very unique way. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot to learn from season four that I hope carries on into season five, of course. But, again, I hope it evolves along with what they're going to be doing with that season. Yeah, so moving on to that, what are your thoughts on Season 5 and what kind of predictions or speculations do you have for Season 5? What do you think they should be doing going forward in terms of your view on how Season 5 can evolve the show overall? Because we're going to be having the age up, everybody's moving up a grade, Link is going to middle school, Lori's going to college, etc. Lily's going to preschool, I think. So with the characters moving up a grade and aging up and they're going to do more potential, like, new stories on different, uh, you know, things they could do with the characters. What do you want them doing moving forward for Season 5? Well, here's the thing about Season 5 is that um, I think we need to talk about the big giant um, elephant in the room here, that being Lori. Yeah. To call her an elephant because, you know, you, you, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a figure of speech. I'm not <laughs> literally calling her an elephant. I get it. But, yeah. um no, so I, I think she's Democrat. But anyway, um, <laughs> so with Lori moving on to college, of course, and she it's going to be a very emotional send. -off. I'm going to and have to have like I'm going to be in a giant fortress of Kleenex tissues and my eyes out because it's going to be a wonderful. No, um, I, have, I have no doubts about that whatsoever. So. I don't think there's a lot of interesting things I can say about that facet of season five. That's obviously going to be there. But as far as everything else goes, um, I look at everyone aging up. I can only think of it being significant only to everyone who's Lincoln and up. Lincoln's going to go to middle school. He's going to go to high school. Lenny is now going to be in a new position, you know, to uh, be the oldest of the house care of everybody else 
and you know Luna, Luan, and uh, you know, uh, sorry, Luna and Luan are also going to be growing up too. So when I look at those characters, you know, Lincoln, of course, is going to have a lot of things that he's going to middle school, and I hope that they do a callback to uh, middlemen back in season three about yeah. what Lincoln learned from his time there with Lynn and with Clyde, and um, he can just to perhaps some things but not everything and his friends are kind of having a similar experience because i think that's going to be a very powerful episode in lincoln's first day in middle school he's going to do about that um and could possibly high school and whatnot and kind of an excerpt the and being like a small fish in the big pond and oh no she's very capable of sports and everything else be nice to see that with going to high school she's gonna have to start picking up the pace competing with her peers who are going to be um better than she's used to competing against back in middle school um so that's with lynn that's with lincoln of course Lori, i covered with Lori. i kind of covered with lenny about being the oldest now she's going to be um she's going to take care of everybody but with Luann and Luna, they're somewhat in the middle. I mean, it's going to be turning that sweet Luann to 15. But I can't really recall, at least in this culture here in America, that being a particularly important hallmark, like a very important um, you know, uh, milestone in a young girl's life. So when you look at Luna, when you look at Luann, what do you have in common? They both have significant others, you know, M. And with Benny, I think that if you really want to hammer home the point that people are maturing, people are growing up, I would like to see oh, potentially, and before anyone, you know, comes at me like, weave, how dare you? Ah, you know, just, <laughs> you know, you know, perhaps break up. Oh, no? break up. It's been a year into the future. Maybe they're, you know, we, we can see that they're different characters. I seeing how with their new perspective that they are different people and maybe that means that the people that they're with don't exactly gel with them anymore. Yeah, maybe we need to see who knows, I don't know. I think it would be kind of interesting to see because look at all of the characters, um, you know, from Lori down to uh when only Lenny really doesn't have like a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever have you. There's, you know, there there was somebody. So it would be kind of interesting to see romance take on a different flair in the new season by having, you know, being an established relationship in the Loud House kind of split apart. Maybe, heck, maybe even Bobby and Lori. Who knows? I was going to say, like... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, people are always saying Lori and Bobby should break up for character development. And I'm kind of curious as to how that will be with college because we know in the Casa Grande days, Bobby wants to go to business school and Lori wants to go to the fairway. I don't think Bobby's going the fairway because, you know, with City Slickers, they they had said that Bobby and Lori were going to go to college together, but now they've changed the whole thing where Lori's going the fairway and Bobby wants to go to business school and take over the Mercado. So I really want to know what's going to happen with those two because right now, you know, I think Bobby knows Lori's going the fairway, but does Lori know that Bobby wants to go to business school? So that'd be a kind of interesting and they maybe have some conflict with their, you know, their future careers and maybe if that does happen with a breakup or split up, that could be really interesting, you know. It especially could be. And you know what? A lot of I've seen some fans say that they necessarily like the fact that Lori's going to like a golf college because it's such a... <sighs> Right. And, you know, yeah. I, I can hear your frustration kind of there, too. I still and hate I kinda it. Share, I kind of share. Yeah, I, <laughs> I still I can hate share it. Some sen- I can share some sentiments with that. But you see, the thing that I think is kind of you uh, uh, interesting about that, like you just said, that there could be some conflict over the fact that, you know, Bobby's not going to be going to college with Lori. It's because this is a golf college. It's right there. There's no way you can think that Bobby's just going to drop everything that he is and just go to golf college. So yeah. this puts a realistic barrier between the two that's not going to have them be able to see directly. So um, I think that is a strength in the fact that it's a golf college and not like a general study college, like a Harvard, well, that's more of a CID, a traditional four-year uh, college, you know? Yeah. I think that's a very on point in the fact that it's a golf college you know beyond just that 
and maybe Lobby, maybe Saluna, maybe uh, you know Luani. Who knows? I would. It would be interesting to see uh, the the issue of a breakup covered outhouse, especially with one of the main characters, be Luani. Maybe even Lenny and a boyfriend or girlfriend that she get uh, next season. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Lenny X Chaz. Come on, let's make that happen. <laughs> still waiting for Lenny X Chaz. Yeah, Lenny X Chaz. Yeah, Lenny X Chaz. You know, why not? Maybe, maybe you know, can go in that direction. I mean, uh, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you think that Lori, with movie The College, and The College, of course, being a half hour away from the city, will become a permanent side character in Casa Grande Season 2? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I think that happen. Um, because, I mean, we've seen that these shows have no problems crossing over characters from one to another, making them permanent residents in that show. So I don't see if they can't do it with Ronnie Ann, even though Ronnie Ann being in the city was the whole point of the show, and there wouldn't be a Casa Grande with Ronnie Ann's place. I still don't see why Lori going over there um, and being a permanent uh, side character, whatever character, whatever have you, character in the Casa Grande that university would not be something very very often i don't see why you wouldn't it would be really nice too because the thing is is that um like you said if everything going over a year and lenny potentially being the one to take um care of the uh you know the family and the surrogate mother so to speak it has been you've seen Lori. i've linked into this now yeah. we get to see Lenny taking Lincoln to the city, you know what right. I mean? So we could see Lenny meeting up with the other Casa Grandes, you know, Lori getting... It would be nice for, for Lori to just be, oh, my brother's coming, I'm so happy, you know? It would yeah. be nice to, for her to have that perspective of someone who's happy to see Lincoln along with Ronnie Ann and all the others, too. So right. he's Cause, pretty sweet. Because Don't You Forget About him. Me was really, um, you know, hinting that or building that up with the Casa Grande crossover with, like, you know... Because Lori was going the fairway to just like, you know, scout it out and see the college and stuff. But then Lincoln wanted to go because he wanted to go see Roddy and he spent the whole day with Roddy Ann. So I feel like that's what's going to happen in future episodes is that like maybe Lenny gets a call from Lori and is like, oh, I can't wait to come see you at college and stuff. And then Lincoln overhears that he's going to let Lenny's going to visit Lori at Fairway. And he's like, oh my gosh, what if I, you know, like, what if I come too? maybe Ronnie Ann can meet up with us. So I can see her again and stuff. So I'd love that they did that again, where, you know, maybe it's in the Casa Grandes, maybe it's in the Loud House. Because with Casa Grandes, you know, we had the lobby episode where they crossed over back and forth between showing Royal Woods and Great Lake City. So they could still do that in the future with the crossover. So I still feel like what Lori will become a permanent character in Casa Grande Season 2, because as of right now... We don't know if the Casa Grandes are going to be following the Season 5 formula of them moving up a grade. We don't know if Rodian is going to be 12 years old like Link is going to be 12 years old. We don't know, but I assume it's going to be because well, because if TLH Season 5 is going to have uh, cross, uh, Casa Grande crossovers, which they claim to be having, they got to move up the Casa Grandes, right? Well, that makes all the sense. Well, then, yeah, that, that adds, you know, I don't think we've seen any footage of season five. Grand is we like most. No, I mean we haven't seen any footage of season five either. But they have never. But um, they've talked about season two and what what they're gonna do. But they haven't mentioned anything about the the Casa Grande's moving aging up. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Cause like I don't want there to be Casa, Casa Grande season two where Roddy is eleven. That all of a sudden she steps into the loud house, being Lincoln, that she's suddenly twelve years old. <laughs> you know, yeah, it'd be yeah, so weird. Be- <laughs> That, that would be kind of weird. That'd be like a big whiplash. Like, Ronnie, is it your birthday? <laughs> you yeah, know, I don't know. Ponytail gets longer. She's not wearing a hoodie anymore. She's wearing like a short shirt and she's short now or whatever. Like, Luna, when she was like, I don't know. It was just an updated wardrobe just out of nowhere. It's like the city. Yeah. Over to Royal Wood and all of a sudden you're a jumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the Loud House is just like an alternate universe where she could change her clothes, and then once she goes back to the Casa Grande, she's 11 again. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's okay, yeah, that, that would be something. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, like, I'm really excited for season five because of all the potential stories they can do 
with certain characters aging up, like, like in the middle school, and uh, so on and so forth, and, like, relationships, and the Casagrande crossovers, and we're gonna have, you know, specials, like, we're gonna have, of course, an episode with Flip, with Christmas Carol, that's happening, of course, so, you know, that's happening, but, like, there's just so much potential with season five, and, Whatever they're going to do with season five, I'm really excited for. But yeah, Lori is the biggest question. What's she going to do in terms of the show once she moves to college? Are they going to, have, you know, show her with cameos, like when she does video chats? Is she going to appear in the Casa Grandes more often? Because, of course, season one is almost over. We haven't had Casa Grande episodes in a while. We don't know when we're going to be back. I, I assume August, so that's the case. But with Lori, she'll probably appear in the Casa Grande. She'll probably become a, a, a permanent side character. And we'll probably see the family visit her in college from time to time. But I'm really, I'm really, really excited what the other characters are going to be doing next season. Because we don't know yet. We don't have any clear idea of what they're doing besides aging them up and Lake and going to middle school and so on and so forth. So I'm just excited of what the potential could be in terms of you know, evolving the characters, developing them from being what their ages are now to what they could be a year later, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, any other final thoughts on you, on the future of Season 5 for you? Well, I'd have to say that I do appreciate the uh, somewhat ambitious that the show has done in the past few seasons. They haven't just focused on the Lao family. They've gone to other and Ronnie Ann and everybody else Zach I, I appreciate that sort of focus but I believe season 5 I really think we need to go back to our roots a little bit back in season 1 and, and kind of try to just focus more so on the Loud family what they do with them being older them being more grown up their new roles in, in the house and in society and in their lives in general I'd like to see something like that more so than just having a more scattered, you know, uh, sort of direction of rural woods. I'd like the scope to be a little bit small, especially since we don't know. Uh, maybe I, it will be, maybe it won't be, I don't know. I, it is then, yeah, it's focused more on family than I agree on that too, because, you know, now that they're moving up a, a grade, I really don't want them to, you know, scatter around and focus on other characters, like, side characters, as much as I really liked, you know, like, the Stella episode, or, you know, like, a Carol and Lori episode, we really want, I really want to see them just, you know, again, just, like, just focus on the Lao family, cause, right, because right now, they need to figure out what their roles are going to be in the house that, that now they're up a grade, we don't know what they're going to be like in terms of that, so, we really need to focus on them first before we focus on more relationships and more other things that are happening with the side characters. I mean, if there's a potential season six, you could do that. We don't know there's going to be a season six, but you know, if that happens, that probably will happen. But with season five, we really should just focus on the Lao family and their relationships can be, you know, focus on that, whether it be romantic or platonic, whatever, you know, side characters, stuff like that. But I do agree on you that we should just keep it smaller scale and just focus on the louds and what it's going to be like for them moving into these new roles. Like with Lincoln going to middle school, that's going to be a great episode, just seeing him in middle school, what his, you know, what his, what his, what his perspective is going to be on that and how it's going to change him as a person. That's going to be really interesting, like with middle men. So I think I agree with you. We really need to see what these characters are going to be like in their roles before we focus on other characters besides the louds. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And also with that, uh, my final thought on five, all that plus, let's get Luna and Luann with another clue. Yes. Some of that. If we don't get Luann and Luna episode in season five, if season five is the last episode, then I'm just going to cry. <laughs> I want to know about these two as roommates. Give us a Luann and Luna episode for, for, for goodness sake, you know? Just for goodness sake, give us an episode about the relationship. That's all that matters. All right, so Weave, thank you so much for doing this with me. I really appreciate you coming on for this little Casa mini so talking about the last episode of season four and season five. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's my pleasure, you know? I mean, no one can see me right now, but I mean, if anyone else asks me to talk about the Loud House or anything else for like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour and my little cramped up, wet inducing sound booth i would have said thanks you, you better pay me first but for you sonny 
I could do it for free all day, any day. Oh, well, That's I fantastic. appreciate that. <laughs> yes. I appreciate that. My other guests made me pay them. They're like, no, I'm not coming on until you pay me to pay me 20 bucks. It's like, all right, here, here's your 20 bucks. But you are the only guest I've had who's actually come on for free. So I really appreciate that, Weave. Mm -hmm. So, Weave, is there any uh, social media you like to plug on my show before we go? Uh, well, here's the thing about social media. I mean, I think in these days, I think the last thing I want to do is anyone to continue on to to social media too much but if you want to find me um on twitter you can follow me at eveocracy that's w-e-a-v-o-c-r-a-c-y there you can look on my profile page and you can look at um my other social uh, media links that i have you know for instagram which i hardly post on um, so you can just go ahead and check that out. And like I alluded to earlier, there may or may not be a certain shipping week that's happening August the 2nd to the 8th. That's going to feature a Lincoln Loud and Stella. Uh, maybe that's happening. Maybe it's not happening. Why don't you go ahead and at least check out at Weavocracy. Check it out. See what's going on with that. Um, that's really about it as far as social media goes. All right, so make sure you follow Weave on all the social media and, of course, contribute to the Stellican Week that's happening in August. If you don't, I will find you and I'll make you contribute. So do it. <laughs> and as for me... Yeah, she, she'll, she'll do it. She will I, I will. I will. I will find you. If you are not contributing to Stellican Week, even though you told Weave you're contributing to Stellican Week and don't do it, I will find you. <laughs> and as for me, if you have any questions about the podcast or want to discuss the podcast with me, you can contact me over at Sunny Clips on Twitter or at the podcast's Twitter, Castle Loud Chats. And we'll see you all next time on Castle Loud Chats. Mm -hmm.